Yeah. All right. Hey, folks. Hey. Thank you for your patience. We're all trying to navigate this technology world to give you the best presentation possible tonight. And it's really awesome to see all your faces and we're excited to meet you in person. And I'm Kelly, by the way. So I'm one of the assistants, I'll be up at Bridger. And you've seen Patrick, he's gonna wave at you really quick. Got Sarah, our big sky. Uh -huh. Got Colleen, she's part of the Bridger team. Then we got Corbin, he's part of the Big Sky team. Patrick's the director for Bridger, in case you're wondering. But we're all basically your ski, adaptive ski team for this winter. So that's our intro. And I'm going to try my best to kick us off with sharing some stuff. Get us rolling. How's that look, everybody? Team? Yeah. So welcome to Eagle Mount. This is our winter snow sports program that you have signed up to volunteer with. And this is your new volunteer training. And we're happy to have you here in this Zoom party tonight. So our agenda for the evening is as follows. We kind of did a little who we are introduction for us, but we're gonna introduce the program to you. We're going to talk about the volunteer input impact that you have as volunteers, because without you guys, this program cannot function. You guys are invaluable people. And so we are super stoked to have more of you guys joining in on the Eagle Mount program with us. We're going to talk through the ski program logistics. We're going to talk about what it takes to be a volunteer. We're going to talk about the assessment and resources. We're going to talk about how we identify how we are personally identified on the hill. We're gonna talk about various adaptive equipment that we'll be utilizing. Talk about mountain and chairlift safety, lift evacuation, which is always fun, training goals and information, and then field some questions for you guys. So Eagle Mount, who we are. Eagle Mount in Bozeman was started in 1982 by General Robert C. Mathis and his wife, Greta. They had a heart for to start this program and wanted to serve people with disabilities and cancer. And so in 1993, this program began with the winter ski program. Today, Eagle Mount has grown from not only the ski program, um, it's, it's huge. It creates unparalleled recreation opportunities for people of all ages with cognitive and physical disabilities. So it's awesome what a little dream can do. How we are funded as Eagle Mount. So last year we served 2,003 participants. We utilized 1,994 volunteers. Our funding is, is through generous support of the Bozeman community in the greater Gallatin Valley. We're, found, we're funded by foundations and corporations. We are funded by community partners and we don't take any money from the government. So then the cost of this program is um, where we also we have scholarships available to anyone who needs them. So we want people to be a part of this program. We don't want costs to prohibit that. And we never turn anyone away who's not able to pay. And you can see over on the side, we've got a couple pie charts about the breakdown of our finances and how we kind of handle revenue and support and so on. And if you'd like more technical details, we can get you more of that later. Our ski impact, as you can see, just even that smile on the face, that shows already a little bit of the impact that we have, that we are impacting 344 ski participants. We, are in, we have 505 ski volunteers. There are 2,000 individual lessons that are given over the course of a winter season. This is like brought to you by 15,233 volunteer hours. So like I said, volunteers, you guys are key for this. And this provides adaptive ski and snowboard lessons, Eagle Mount does at Bridger Bowl, Big Sky and Moonlight Basin, the Yellowstone Club, and Crosscut Mountain Sports Center for our cross country ski program. And now I'm gonna show you guys a video about what we do today as Eagle Mount. And it just really gives you a bigger picture grasp for that.
What we do is recreation. It's therapeutic recreation, it's adaptive recreation. It works for people with any kind of disability. If you want to experience the joy of recreation in Montana, we will take you here. I came to Montana when I was 18 um, to, to snowboard and ski and rock climb and kayak. A lot of the reasons my friends all came out. And, uh, and then in my mid-20s I started having um, neurological problems with my, my legs. Uh, they began to just like not work. I began to kind of look for resources to help me get back and do the things I love. And I was, a friend in town had told me about Eagle Mount. I spoke with the ski director and she asked me what I was coming in for and I said I wanted to learn how to sit ski. I feel like the Eagle Mount has like, given me a whole new kind of family. It's a, a group of people I didn't know beforehand, giving me, they've basically given me my, my recreational life back. Anybody can ski. Anybody can come out with us and have a wonderful time with a supportive form of recreation. Kayaking, fly fishing, rock climbing, um, gardening, you name it. If you can do it in Montana, we will take you there. And days when we think of moving, those are days that I think we can't because Eagle Mount is here and Eagle Mount would not be a resource anywhere else that we would go. The fact that Eagle Mount can accommodate kids of all different abilities is, is truly phenomenal. I know for our family, we've had some financial struggles. Of course, I want Ida Mae to get these experiences and to, and to grow both emotionally and socially and physically. He's like equipment. The right equipment. <laughs> Play horses, go golfing and swimming. Kayaking and rock climbing. The first in his life that are important and that we've got the scrapbooks filled with at home aren't when he first spoke or said his first word or got his first tooth or even when he walked for the first time. The first that are important in his life and that are making him become the young man that he is today are the first that he's experienced with Eagle Mount. The first time he got on skis and came down the mountain. The first time he got in the boat and then the kayak, and then the whitewater rafting, and, and rock climbing. He has done it, it, things and experienced things through Eagle Mountain that we as parents couldn't have ever offered him. Moved here about five years ago um, from Southern California. We were born and raised there, but it's changed a lot since uh, you know we grew up there. We wanted a better quality of life for ourselves and for our boys. Um, our oldest son is a special needs child, our biological son, and we have two more boys that we adopted that are siblings set. And uh, the huge bonus for us was the fact that uh, Eagle Mount was here. Um, I don't know that it would work everywhere else, um, but it says a lot for Bozeman and it reinforces again why we are here. I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma when I was 18 years old. It's a cancer predominantly located in the chest and neck. I can't stress how important camp is in, in helping these kids feel normal again. And you get to have the same stories as people your age have, you know, that haven't been coddled. You kind of get like a second chance at your childhood here. Me and my friend Casey and I were standing we're standing down by the, uh, the falls in Yellowstone. And I just kind of turned to her and I was like, do you think we appreciate it more? And she goes, she goes, appreciate what? And I was just like, just life, just this. Like looking out over this, like we get to see this. We're still alive. We get to experience this. Big Sky Kids reaches the entire nation. Eagle Mount isn't really, it's not specifically just Bozeman that's being impacted. It's, it's the entire nation in itself. As long as there are people with disabilities, as long as there are children who get cancer, as long as Montana has the power to heal so much and be of such great benefit to people, Eagle Mount needs to be here.
All right. Okay. Let's so, get going here. I don't know about you guys, but I've seen that probably 500 times and it still gets me. And it's just, we are so happy you guys are here. It's, it's a big part of what we do and um, the community. It's just, it's fabulous. So just kind of switching gears here. Uh, we'll do a little overview of the programs. You kind of saw, we'll just rush these quickly, but um, Eagle Mount, besides the, for those of you that don't know, offer quite a few other programs and you can have a look at this, but everywhere from the skiing to our equestrian programs, to our aquatics, which is huge. We have wonderful programs like Saturday night out for the parents to get a break. We do these amazing uh, family support camps and activities. Uh, which are just phenomenal because everybody's a caretaker and then we all get to come in there and um, be one big happy family with everybody included. Um, Adventure Days is sort of like a camp of hiking and rafting and kayaking, um, our cycling program. And we also run our veteran camps for our wounded veterans. Um, it's just, it's an awesome opportunity. So besides skiing, if you guys want to get involved, we want you. So have a look out there. That's our little plug. Just a second, Sarah. I'm going to try to no get worries. a little better. I can, I can keep talking about the programs because yeah. there's so many awesome ones. So we also, down there at the bottom, the SEPTA program involves um, parents, sort of a uh, just a, uh, the yeah. parents only to have a, know that they have support from others around the community. Um, the ice skating program, which we had was a big part of our program this winter when it kicked off our fall, our horticulture, I gotta say is awesome where they get to actually plant all their seeds. And then we have, we made bee huts this year. We made nature signs, like everyone thought of like a positive um, word that brought in bliss. And then we went around the campus and picked the flowers and maybe a pine cone and a rock. And then we, in that uh, word that they picked, would then they spelled it out and then actually all their work went down to I think it was the first interstate bank um, big sky kids which is our oncology camp is huge uh, we run five camps um, throughout the summer that's another thing to get involved with so we're, we're pretty we're, we're going strong in all of our programming Okay, so uh, so we got a little gist on um, the masses. Now let's talk a little bit about our staff. We've had what now five of our Zoom. So you're getting familiar with the Bridge of Bowl staff. Patrick is the director and then Kelly and Colleen will be helping out with the snow sports, assisting him doing all the organizing and volunteering, uh, coordinating. Then up at Big Sky, we've got myself and then Corbin is, as well. So we're going strong. We have already had lessons. Um, so training starts as you said or as you know starts tomorrow for you guys and then we've got our cross cut program so Megan Shaver's in charge of that so if you're not getting lessons a lot just because we don't know what's how it's going to roll this winter um, our cross country and snowshoeing is an awesome way to get involved we want you there mm -hmm. Tuck, you want to read a little bit of your Bridger program Yes. So <clears throat> this is a little bit nuts and bolts, and you'll definitely get this information again. It's a lot of kind of data, but it's good to kind of wrap your head around it several times. So our program runs from January 16th. It says 18th on there, but it runs from January 16th to March 15th. Um, it is an eight-week program with one weekend break for a holiday in there. But the idea behind uh, the eight-week program is that participants come at a regularly scheduled day of the week and then a morning or an afternoon. And then the volunteers are assigned with them every day of the program. So ideally you ski eight days with your participants. <clears throat> you really get to, to uh, work together to get to know each other and, and build great experiences. Um, we have the morning and afternoon lessons, like I said, seven days a week. We meet at the what we call the Bridger Hut. <clears throat> For those of you who are familiar with Bridger, uh, the ski patrol building, the first aid room, we are attached to that. And this year, actually, we had an addition put on. So there's tons of space, which is really nice. A little bit of a bummer that we can't fill it full of people this year because of COVID. But it also, it's a plus because we can space people out a little nicer. So that was that was fortuitous. Um, they're switching over this year to RFID cards at Bridger. So when you show up, we'll give you an Eagle Mount card. 
and you'll use that as your ski pass. You can use it to free ski before or after your lesson. So let's say you have an afternoon lesson. You want to show up in the morning. You can come in, grab your ticket, ski all morning, meet at, meet at 1245 and do your afternoon lesson. Um, your, if you have a season's pass to Bridger, your season's pass will not work on days where you volunteer. Even if you have a season's pass, you'll still need to come in and grab one of our uh, RFID cards. And that's, a, that's how we are bypassing the reservation system they put in place this year to make it simpler. Um, little in fun incentive for every four lessons you coach. So every two hours you do, you get one free voucher and you can use that voucher to ski for yourself on any day you choose. And, or you can give that to a friend and family member to come up and ski with them if you'd like as well. Uh, and then you reach out pretty regularly once a week, usually once the season is going, Kelly will be doing that. Uh, to fill in kind of substitute needs and make sure all of our participants and volunteers are matched up properly. Thanks, Kelly. Oh, go ahead, here Sarah. Here we go. Big Sky Program. Um, a couple just different things. We started uh, Thanksgiving weekend and run until the 18th of April. Um, this year, we're offering two six-week uh, lessons at Moonlight for the locals. So our first program is going from the 9th to the 15th and then the 27th to the 3rd. Um, again, we do lessons. It doesn't matter if you're at Big Sky or at Bridger. We do 10 to 12, 1 to 3. It's the same across the board. Same thing we want you to arrive 15 minutes early. Um, come get a ticket from us at the Eagle Mount Base, um, which is next to the uh, North Face uh, retail outlet. And again, we use those um, RFID cards and they have to be turned in at the end of the day. Big Sky does a $5 charge for all of our tickets we lose, so gives you guys a, make sure you bring them back. Um, and you cannot sell the vouchers either at Big Sky or Patrick. I mean, or Patrick, or Patrick, you can't sell the cards um, or at Bridget. So keep that in mind. You can give them to your parents, you can give them to your family, you can give them to friends, but please don't sell them. This is a real perk both programs. So lessons are a little bit different at uh, Big Sky. I do a more of an on-call. Let's say I have a skier that can is Tuesday at 10 o'clock in the morning and I'll shoot everybody that has been um, trained in that particular discipline and I'll say, hey, tick, 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 can you do the 10 a.m. lesson? And it'll say either Big Sky BS, Moonlight, ML, or the Yellowstone Club will be YC. And then you will just need to text me back as soon as you can, because it's sort of like first come first serve. Today I sent out, or yesterday or Monday, I sent out the holiday sign-up sheet for those of you that are training before Christmas. Um, you guys can put your name on the list. I can't guarantee everyone's gonna get a lesson. I try during the Christmas break, this could be a little bit funkier um, this season just with COVID, but keep on keeping on. If you're not hearing from me, reach out. Um, I, like I said, we have over 500 volunteers, so I want to get you all in. Um, if you're, you need to cancel or you need to change, please let us know whether you're doing a lesson at Bridger or Big Sky. We need to know so we can fill that spot. Um, yeah, awesome. So a couple things, what it takes to be a volunteer and what to keep in mind. Uh, this is why we're giving you this, this information would be your new volunteer orientation. Um, we we kind of, we went with, the, uh, with Barb and Colleen did their amazing presentations. And now we kind of need to give you the nuts and bolts of how we rule. So um, really the biggest thing here is the openness to learn and develop new skills because everybody's going to do things differently, but you can all learn from each other. Probably one of the number one things is your commitment. Your participants are out there depending on you. I mean, we all have things going on in our lives. We get it and it, we, we so respect your time as a volunteer, but those kids and adults and whoever is skiing with us, they are, some of them are living for the day that they get to ski on this particular Tuesday or Wednesday or if they're on holiday. Um, you guys represent Eagle Mount. And as you can see, those numbers that we put up there earlier, I mean, we have grown so much and they see us on the hill. You wear your bib. And I mean, it's a proud thing. 
For me, I'm so proud to be part of AOMA and we're represented every day out there. Um, I also sent you all the uh, volunteer handbooks. That's kind of like your little Bible going on, a lot of good information. So please read that. Again, if you're, when you're a new volunteer, you'll need to bring that with you to your training and or, or we'll have some extra copies to sign, but please bring that or you can scan them and send them back to me. Um, and then as we've gone over the, the commitment to the COVID protocols and following those guidelines. But there's a lot more, so here it comes. Full stop, let her rip, Cal. Oh, Patrick, this is you. Woohoo! So <clears throat> we often say, why are we doing this? Or when we're making little decisions, it always comes back to our mission statement. And that is to empower our participants through the ability to move on the snow. What we have is a tool to achieve a much greater outcome than just skiing. So we have our program mission. And that mission filters down to the staff. And then it filters down to this teaching team. Teaching team being volunteers that have been around for a while. And we give, we, they want a little more responsibility. So they help us train the other volunteers. So that mission goes to the volunteers and then it goes to the participants. You'll see those are double-sided areas, arrow, arrows. So that, that's the general gist, but it all comes back around with feedback and communication together. So uh, if, we, if you ever feel like you have input and you want to tell us how we can better empower our participants, this is kind of the chain to do it. And you can always skip straight to, to anybody on this, on this ladder. Um, next one. Colleen, I think we got Colleen doing these next bunch. She's unmuting. There we go. Am I unmuted? You are. Okay. Um, so what to keep in mind as you make your journey here with Eagle Mount, um, we want to move from enabling to empowering. So you're really there to empower people and make them have ownership over their lessons as well. Um, so you're, you're there to help them do that, but, but they have to be the ones doing too. Um, we want to represent our skiers as well as our community by really focusing on abilities and um, less stigmatization. <laughs> Um, we provide the opportunity to, to make gains happen, um, to kind of use that language we've been referring back to in a lot of these teachings. Um, okay, so uh, it's really important to remember like, yeah, we're here to teach skiing, but first safety and then fun. Um, that's really what it's all about. So when it comes to safety, um, you need to know what's best for your participant and uh, help them follow that skier res responsibility code and the Eagle Mount rules. And that will all be covered in your new vol clinics on snow. Um, safety is really the most important thing there. And it's important to be aware of your own limits and where your lines are and let us know if you're uncomfortable with what we're asking of you. Um, your safety comes first. So if you're ever overwhelmed or you feel like something's really outside of your skill set, um, please, please, please communicate that to us. Um, and fun, have a good time. That's why we're here. Um, that's what it's all about. And the learning comes after that. Um, and you will be guided on how to make that happen for your participants. Um, the teaching team is going to run through those clinics with you. Um, we just got to sample this clinic this past weekend and it has a lot of great information um, to get you up and ready to to coach anyone on their ski lessons. Um, okay, confidentiality is really important. Um, we hope that you're out there sharing stories from your lessons at Eagle Mount. Um, I get so much out of it when I have an awesome lesson and it makes such a great impact on the community when you share those experiences with others. Um, just refrain from using names. Uh, it's important to keep that part of it private. Um, 
but please, please share your experiences. When using social media, do not tag photos with names of participants or post any stories that would show anyone in a negative light. Um, use discretion when friending participants. I would strongly discourage that. Um, but you know, use your, your judgment and maintain those appropriate boundaries. Um, one of the things that we are teaching along with the skiing is boundaries and um, social skills and things like that. So you want to be firm on those with yourself as well. Um, and just please overall be considerate of the participants and respect their privacy. Um, so person first language is an important thing to be aware of. Um, definitely, definitely do not use the R word. Um, that's one that I hear, no matter who I hear that from, I correct it immediately in my personal life as well. Um, and just, just that's not a word that we're going to use. Um, in since 2010, um, the word mental retardation, it's not even used to categorize anyone anymore. Um, that's been changed to intellectual disabilities. Um, and it's important to remember here that people with disabilities are people first. So rather than saying um, an autistic kid or Down's kid especially, um, don't you would wanna say a child with autism or a child with Down syndrome. Um, I want to add one note too that identity first language can be somebody's personal preference. So I would just follow the lead of the participant on that, but but start off with your person first language. Um, it's just good to be aware of, especially in the autistic community, a lot of folks um, prefer that identity first language. So keeping that in mind. Um, we all have varying abilities physically, intellectually, and socially. And we want, we all want the people around us to find out who we are, what we like, what we dislike, what our abilities are. So you want to do the same for your participants. You want to find out who they are as a person, um, what motivates them, what do they love to do, what makes them happy, what makes them mad. Um, just kind of get in there and get to know them. And especially if you're in one of the um, local programs and you get to build that relationship over time, um, you can really grow in that area. Um, okay, for communication. So you wanna talk to your participants directly and calmly. Um, do not speak too loud or condescendingly slow. Um, you wanna be age appropriate and assume understanding and ability, but be direct and, and clear. You want to allow your skier time to think and respond to your questions. Um, don't underestimate their communication, even if they're nonverbal. Um, it's good to note too that some people with autism, for example, don't communicate their pain. Um, so you wanna figure out really how to communicate with your specific participant. Um, definitely ask other volunteers, there's a huge wealth of experience um, among the volunteers. So on your lessons, you're likely going to be paired with somebody who's been doing this for a while. And so lean on them um, when you need a little help and always come to the staff. Um, we love to, to share our tips and tricks for communicating. Um, and make sure you know about, you know, allergies, meds, patient history, that'll be in your participant bio that you get before your lesson. Um, you know, treat everyone at their age, even if their developmental or maturity age is lower. Um, so make sure that we're, we're not talking down to anyone and we're really empowering folks. And use that we language when discussing your lessons. We really want to promote collaborative collaboration and focus on those gains. So it is that participant's lesson and and you're there to facilitate their growth. So make sure it's a, a we kind of approach. Um, so where do you start? That's probably what you're wondering right now. I feel like um, a lot of this information, if you've been at the past couple of clinics has been a lot coming up front and um, you might be thinking like, what do I actually do to start out? So, um, 
it really all starts with that participant assessment. Um, so you want to look at that bio sheet when you get it, um, make sure you know if there's any seizure risks, um, what their motivations are. We, we do ask for that information before when participants are registering. So you'll get some clues about what motivates them, what some triggers are, what their goals are. Um, really focus on abilities and use their strengths to get them where they want to be. Um, we're helpful, we're happy to help you um, best structure it for your participants. So always ask questions. Um, talk to the participant first, then the parents, teachers, or caregivers. So make sure you're always focusing on that participant. Um, they're your partner in this and they're the one you wanna communicate with and then go to um, their community that brings them to your, their lessons. And again, just ask questions. Um, so I feel like I have a lot of these, but I'll just keep going. <laughs> You're um, doing great. <laughs> great. So um, when you have a lesson, just make sure you come 15 minutes before. So that's either, you know, 945 for the AM lesson or 1245 for the PM lesson. And um, as I believe Patrick mentioned, you are welcome to come check in with us and get your pass early so you can get some turns in before or after. Um, and you will um, have another volunteer on your lesson with you. So you wanna communicate with them and kind of decide who's gonna be the lead and the assistant on the lesson. Um, and it is a collaborative um, throughout, but it's really great to have someone take a little bit more of the lead. And that might in the beginning be the more experienced volunteer, but you all have amazing things to offer, even if it's your first year. So don't be afraid to um, speak up and, and share what, you know, you have a lot to bring to the table. So don't be, don't be shy. Um, and you're going to read your participant bio. Um, we'll have adaptive equipment ready for you. And um, you're going to greet your participant, see where they're at that day, um, check in if they slept well, if they ate well, um, make sure they have the right layers for the weather that day, that they've taken their meds, that they're ready to go, um, and then head out in the hill and have some fun. That's why we're here. So uh, resources that you have, um, the volunteer handbook, that's a huge one that's gonna have a lot of answers for you um, in the disability handbooks. The staff and the teaching team are wonderful resources. Ask us anything. Um, the teaching team has put in so much time and um, really has taken that extra step still as a volunteer to um, share their skills and, and train all the volunteers. So definitely lean on the teaching team and um, all of our trainings too are built off the PSIA manual. So that's a great place to turn. There's like a million videos on YouTube um, that I watch a lot, especially if I have teach snowboard lesson. Um, I'm like looking through all those PSIA um, materials. It's, it's all out there. And just be creative. Um, you want this to be fun. So, you know, we're gonna emphasize using games and songs, um, bring props with you and, um, you know, all kinds of things like that. We're gonna have a million ideas for you. So when you're, when you're ready, um, definitely come to us for ideas. We use a lot of, you know, Simon Says or follow the leader instead of just running drills. So start thinking um, in the form of play because play is really how we learn, especially youth, but it's how we all learn the best. So um, the more you can make your lessons like play, the better it's gonna be. I think I'm finally done. <laughs> Corbin, it, take it away, bud. This is Corbin. Corbin, aka Little Toots. Do we need to have him <laughs> unmute? No, I, I got it. I just oh, forgot there's, it. There's Little Toots. There he is. Yeah. So, uh, how to see us on the hill? Um, it's going to be one participant with two volunteers or a staff member. Um, usually, usually it's two volunteers. Sometimes there is one-on-one -on -one work, um, varies on the participant. 
Um, the staff and the teaching team will wear orange jackets and the volunteers wear those bright orange or yellow uh, Eagle Mount bibs. Uh, all volunteers and participants will have uh, lift tickets um, and most stand-up skiers will have an orange uh, racing band. So uh, as a, an adaptive program, we obviously use a lot of adaptive equipment. However, we don't want to use it if it's not necessary. Um, we want to uh, inspire independence and we can do so by using adaptive equipment to help our participants learn and then try and make a plan to get away from that equipment if possible. Uh, we coach a variety of skiers. Um, not all of them use uh, the adaptive equipment that we have. Um, some skiers have a physical or cognitive challenge, but are totally fine to ski uh, solo. Um, gains can be made outside of simply improving their ski slash sliding skills. Um, we can see gains um, in areas of independence, confidence, joy, and life skills. Um, so some of the adaptive equipment we use, just a quick overview. Um, like I said earlier, we want to try and develop a plan to get away from uh, these uh, different forms of equipment. Um, but we have uh, tips and tethers, and uh, tethers can be added to um, a, a waist harness or to the tips of skis. Um, and the goal of those is to add a kinesthetic cue to assist students to develop their turn shape um, kind of learn what it feels like to get on edge and use rotation. Um, and then those tethers can then be removed when students learn to control their speed with um, their turns. Uh, we also use something called ski legs, and this looks a lot like a walker uh, that is mounted to a pair of skis. Um, and then that is tethered by an in instructor um, with sides of support, as you can see in that picture. Um, and this can be used for a variety of diagnoses, such as cerebral palsy, stroke, uh, traumatic brain injury, muscular dystrophy, and others. Um, we uh, also utilize three track and four track skiing. So this is for individuals that can um, support themselves standing on one or two legs, but just need a little bit extra help um, with balance and steering. Um, and so they use two handheld outriggers um, and again, this can be attributed to a variety of uh, diagnoses, um, but common ones include stroke, cerebral palsy, amputation, traumatic brain injury, and other balance issues. Uh, we also use sit skis, so that includes bi skis, dual skis, and mono skis, um, and they're used by people with spinal cord injuries um, and diminished lower body strength or coordination. Uh, the bi ski uses a bucket style seat with two skis underneath it, um, and it can be assisted with fixed or handheld outriggers. You can see the fixed outriggers on that photo on the left and then the handheld on the right. Um, and this can be assisted with tethers or without tethers, depending on the independence of the skier. Uh, and last, we can also use mono skis, um, very similar to the bi ski, but um, obviously only has one ski underneath it. Um, and we don't tether these, so these are for completely independent skiers. Who do we have doing safety? <clears throat> Is that me now? Yeah, I believe you're taking away the rest of the show. Um, <clears throat> So we'll just run through this. You'll get many reminders. Our helmet policy is you must wear a helmet and it must be in good working order. Um, all of our participants and our volunteers uh, wear a helmet at all times during lessons. And, that, and a lot of the mountains are steering in that direction as well. Uh, tethering policy, you will receive training, specific training, and you will get checked up on that tethering skill. <clears throat> and then you will we'll also want you to feel completely confident doing it. It's a higher level hard skill. So we make sure everyone's on the same page there as a standard. Uh, advancing chair lifts, especially as new volunteers or new coaches, that decision of going from a lower level chair lift to an upper level chair, higher level chair lift, um, that isn't to be taken lightly. That can really affect the outcomes of the day and the experience. So we always check in with staff members before we want to advance our student on a lift, onto a new lift. 
uh, emergency situations. <clears throat> Some of that you'll go over in your on snow clinics where the, with the forms and uh, what mountain specific information you need during an emergency. Incident reports, same thing. Um, speed control is always important. It's one of the biggest of the responsibility code to always ski in control. And we always reinforce that speed control is achieved through turn shape. If I make a nice round turn, turning up and up the mountain at the end <clears throat> towards the trees or end up, that's how I slow down. Uh, high visibility as a volunteer. That's why we have the bibs and the orange jackets and two people most of the time, two volunteers. So that if one person is coaching <clears throat> or assisting a participant or they're doing something together, the second volunteer can be a safety officer or keep eye an eye on the bigger picture and make sure that we are stopping in safe places and aware of the people around us. Uh, and then protecting you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, there are some important quote code of contact rules. A lot of them are just very self-explanatory, but we have a zero tolerance for, for all of the <clears throat> isms um, as well as drug use. So if you're abusing anyone in any way, physically, um, emotionally, verbally, uh, you, abusing drugs, uh, those are all no, no goes, obviously. We also, very important, do not administer a medication. We'll, we will know if someone's on a certain medication with that bio sheet. However, it is not our, not our responsibility to give it to them. Um, that is done by caregivers alone. Uh, and no bathroom assistance. There are some random events where uh, you need to rush someone into the bathroom, um, but you never, you would never do that alone. You'd always use your second, and that's to protect you as, as much as it is to protect them. Uh, we don't need any of that trouble. Injuries and health during your training, part of learning hard skills and using equipment and skiing with people is learning how to do it safely because we want to do this for the long haul. And if we don't do it right, we, that that uh, career in adaptive skiing can get cut short. We don't want that. Um, and then the COVID-19 policies, we really appreciate everyone's flexibility on, in this crazy time. Uh, we gave our base level guidelines and protocols. Those have been sent out to you if you were uh, signed up for the Bridger volunteer program. And uh, they are subject to change throughout the season with these changing times. But that's our base level. And if anyone has questions on that, we're happy to field those in a little bit. Thank you, Kelly. Chairlift information, again, you're going to do a lot of this nitty gritty, more impactful stuff on the snow, but things to know, you can use the APO line, that short line or that line that ski schoolers use. Um, you can do that with our, with our lessons. This year, especially, it's going to be really important to communicate with not only the public, but also um, the lift operators, because we will not be riding with, with public on these lifts. Each lift will have its a set number or set maximum will allow for our program and each lesson will have slightly different rules for how you're gonna ride the chairlifts, depending on the participant's level of independence. We're gonna to try to really reduce that number. Unloading, uh, clear the unloading zone before you adjust your equipment. Evacuation, we will go over in future times. Um, every once in a while, we have to evacuate the lift and it ultimately comes down to listen to the ski patrollers, but there are a set of skills and we will go over those in time. If you'd like to put these phone numbers in, to your phone down here for both Big Sky Ski Patrol and Bridger Ski Patrol. <clears throat> That's very handy because in the event that there is an emergency, we ask that you, you call Ski Patrol before you call us. Um, so having these programmed in your phone is huge. Thank you, Kelly. <clears throat> for riding those chairlifts and that communication piece, after we're in the ski school line, we talk to the operators and we let them know, maybe we need a slow, maybe we have a piece of equipment or we need a little extra time to get up to the line. So we just uh, ask for a slow button. And then we also ask or tell that person at the bottom if we'd like one at the top as well. Most of the time, they'll call up to the top shack and say, chair number 37 would like a slow and they'll get you. But in the, in the, uh, in, in the case that they don't relay that message, as you're getting to that top of the chairlift offload ramp, you can either use your thumbs up, thumbs down, or cut it. Um, 
all the lift operators know these signals. Thumbs up means keep it going full speed ahead. Thumbs down means we'd like it slowed down, please. And cut it means full stop. Uh, and that's really only for emergency situations. Uh, we do not use those often at all. Thank you, Kelly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> training goals. This is training season. This is the season to, of growth. It's a beautiful time of year. Um, not only are we creating these trying to create these environments for our participants to succeed, we want you to feel like, oh man, I am growing as a person. I'm learning so many things. Um, we want you to get have some beautiful games. So especially as new volunteers, the first thing we focus on is your comfort level. It can be very uncomfortable and awkward and confusing on these lessons when we first start out, especially if you haven't worked uh, with people with disabilities. So we try to give you some good training. We pair you with a volunteer that's knowledgeable and we really want you to feel comfortable. So if you're ever getting out of that zone, make, make that known to whoever's around you. Um, training is also a time for developing the tools, learning those hard skills and soft skills to have a good time out there. Um, and as always, bring that enthusiasm. This, if you're coming this weekend, be open to being your zany selves, even if you're maybe a little more reserved. Um, get ready to, to crank up some enthusiasm. Kelly? Coaching spectrum. Getting a little heady, getting a little puzzly here. But I like this slide a lot because I find myself, I fit a certain place on this spectrum and I can define that. I My default is more of the science side of the spectrum. So on, on the right side, you have science, which includes technical knowledge, movement analysis, equipment, progressions, disability awareness, all the data, all the those things that we need to learn. And then on the left side, we have the artistic side of the spectrum, which is interpersonal skills, emotional intelligence, creativity, social agility, and games. Those soft skills that are harder to pin down but you know those types of people when you see them. I challenge you to kind of say, oh, where am I trending on this? Um, where are my strengths? Where are my weaknesses? And if you can figure out some of those weaknesses, focusing on them and picking out clinics or asking questions that help you learn and grow to become more centered in this coaching spectrum. Um, I love the, the fundamentals into fun is a great statement. Next slide, Kelly. Finding that balance, like we just said, we're get, you're gonna stand on your, your instincts and whichever side of the spectrum you're naturally on. But if you can add in some fundamentals, some tips, tricks, some games, some tasks, some ways to know exactly what the next step, if I look at a participant and say, oh, this could be the next step for them, you start to develop that movement analysis, um, build it in with fun games, and then it becomes a very thoughtful experience. So you can really work with your participant um, for both of you to achieve. Yeah, and like we said, building your coaching style is partially for the environment, but partially for you as well. Growth. Thank you. Ooh, we have another video for you. Stand by. This is a, a participant-specific video. Someone who's been up at, at uh, Big Sky for a very long time. If you ever want to go and see any of our other videos, they're at the Big Sky Resort video gallery page. And there's several of our participants highlighted. I highly recommend it. Go for it, Kelly. White Wonderland, that kind of jumps out from nothing. It's almost like it's um, not real. When I first moved here, I was a Finnish carpenter and a skier, of course. And now I can't do any more carpentry, but Eagle Mount has made it so I can still ski. I have what's called MSA-C. It's a progressive degenerative disease. I've had it for about eight years now. The, 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 during this whole process of my illness, I've kind of regretted my skiing, so 
I've had to learn how to ski all over again. But it's awesome to feel so free. It's excellent. It's big fun. I've been doing it since I was five years old and couldn't live without it. Lots of faith in my volunteers. They're awesome folks. And I've got people like Janine, my girlfriend, and volunteers. They really have made it possible for me to continue to do it. I love so That's pretty cool. to ski in Vermont at a very small ski area when I was five years old. I started ski racing when I was about 10. Race for USSA. And then I um, went to the University of Vermont and they have a really good ski team. So I wasn't able to race for them, but I was their trainer. That's what got me into ski coaching. I feel like I was able to help some of them learn to be better skiers and better people. I did work with a few people that got on the na national team for the USA. It's freedom for me to get out. Just feel the wind in my face, see all my friends, keep on skiing. I can't complain. It could be a lot worse. I'm blessed. I'm still doing it. I love it. It's hard for me not to go out and ski, you know? It's something that I've done for a long time, so it'd be hard to stop now. Skier for life, you know how that goes. It's coming. It's coming. It's not my Kelly, turn. What, I just what Kelly's finding say... that, guys, I just put something in the chat box about um, we have, I don't know how many exactly we've done. We've produced about six now, but we have um, five more coming out, which I am thrilled about. And they are just so amazing. The, the fellow that works or doesn't even work for us, he started um, with Big Sky Resort and they asked him to do a couple of videos just of the resort. And then he came by our program once and we started talking and he's like, do you think I could film one of your uh, skiers? I'm like, absolutely. Let's get out there and go for it. And he was having so much fun. He literally would come back once a week to try to do another video. And um, it, it's, it's, a, it's an eye opener for people to see what's going on in the program that we offer. And like I said down there, you guys are just about ready to be part of it. And, and it is amazing. You will have these stories to share. What were you going to say, Colleen? No. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, I Honestly, the same thing Sarah's saying. I get so giddy when I watch these videos, and I just cannot wait to be out on snow this year. And I'm so excited for all of you that you get to experience this, too. It's just it's so much fun. Um, so that's it. I just can't contain it. That's all. Alrighty, so the time has come to get you guys pumped up and ready to rock and roll. 
Uh, this, I think I sent everybody that was in their trainings, their information. If you had, did not get an email from me for the next couple, uh, the next few weekends, you have not signed up yet. I haven't sent any of them out for Bridger yet. If you have not signed up, please go back to all those emails that we sent out to you. Um, the, we ask that you show up at 8.30. Our actual lessons will start, our clinics will start at nine sharp. Um, we have different destinations for Big Sky and we, pretty made, or we made that pretty clear, I think, um, with the calls that we made and then as well as the email that we sent out. But if you have any questions, just give me a shout. Uh, Bridge of Bowl, we're still to be determined on where that's all gonna take place, but it's gonna take place. And then Crosscut as well. And like we mentioned before, um, if you're interested in the snowshoe and cross country is to reach out to Megan Shaver. Um, you guys will start out with uh, just doing a basic check-in and making sure all your paperwork is clear, ready to rock and roll. And then again, we'll give you the tickets as well as the masks that we require that everybody wear the same, same type, uh, the three layer disposable behind the ear mask, um, really a sexy look. <laughs> And then during the next two days, which is the highlight of this whole shebang, um, you guys will, you're going to have a lot of information packed into these two days. And don't worry, we know it's a lot of information, um, absorb as much as you can, take away what you can, and then it will all somewhere, it'll trigger in your head what we went over as you start getting on more and more lessons. Um, but personal speed fundamentals, which is pretty fun to do because a lot of us have been skiing our whole life and start coming down the chutes but can't remember how to get in a wedge. You're going to be in a wedge a lot. So if you need to practice like going around your house in a little triangle, start knocking yourself out now. Um, we'll kind of go over some of the expectations we have. Um, earlier was mentioned, we'll talk about the safety, mountain safety uh, and chairlift loading as well as evac. Uh, procedures. It was pretty long for us to go into that tonight, so we're like, we'll spare you, and then we'll send something out, something fun, some more fun for your inbox. Um, again, then we really will zoom in on the lesson plans and the ski progression. We're going to do a lot of that, how to coach, because like Patrick mentioned earlier, a lot of you have never had experience with um, people with disabilities, so we want to give you as much comfort and build that confidence with them. Um, and then again, where we ski at Bridger and Big Sky, using the terrain. Like I mentioned, guys, the snow is dodgy, right? We all know it hasn't snowed for a while. So if you've got rock skis, bring them. But we will make sure that you're on terrain that is safe. Uh, and not to worry, if we have to spend the whole time on the bunny hill, awesome. We love being on the bunny hill. That's where you're going to spend the majority of your time. But there's no reason to go out and get some injuries early game when we need you for you know, till April and the end of March. So that's what we're, that's how we're rolling. Um, to bring the trainings a little bit different, if you are, uh, we have you in the amphitheater, Big Sky, I'm going to talk mainly about Big Sky right now. We'll give you more details on Bridger. Um, for this weekend, we have the amphitheater. If you want to bring your lunches and your backpacks, you'll have, you can keep your stuff in there for your information with your trainers. The, we have 25 max people it hosts 100 people. So if anybody's concerned about social distancing and the rules, we're following those to the T. And then um, and, and we've had big conversations with our trainers as well. Bring your ski equipment, bring your snowboard, have it ready to rock and roll. The first day, just a heads up, you guys can um, use your ski poles. The second day, no poles. So this is, a, this is how we roll. We usually don't have uh, ski poles. So this is, it's, and it's a challenge. So it's all fun. Like these are the new experiences if you haven't done it yet. Um, and again, it's supposed to be maybe fresh in the morning, but by the afternoon, we've got, you know, looking at 36 to 40 degrees. Um, questions to ask, anything you guys want to know, you can shoot it in our chat box right now. We can cover a few things, but your trainers, um, we're going to be rolling around, skiing, meeting and greeting all your groups to ask questions and make sure you guys are feeling uh ready to rock and roll and that you're comfortable, um, but a positive attitude, because this is what it's all about. It is, I mean, it, it's hard not to be positive when you're in this, uh, this job for me, and it's just awesome. Um, and then again, like Patrick and we said earlier, was a mentality to have some fun. So creativity, start learning those songs, hum a few bars, because you're going to be doing a lot of it. 
So if you have any questions, throw them in the chat box. Here's the amazing look, but you'll have the medical masks. But there's the team right there, ready to rock and roll. So we're excited you're here. Again, if you have any questions, reach out. Anybody who want to know anything now, all the information that we've covered right tonight, plus what we did in, in, is in your Eagle Mount uh, training. Uh, I, um, I just like before we start fielding questions, I just like to throw out a, a bit of a caveat for the season. <clears throat> As some of you know, we're in some weird times and that has affected our program and our numbers for the year. So talking about Bridger specifically, we're running at about 30% of the participants that we would on a normal year for a variety of reasons. Um, so it's a strange year for volunteers because we want to engage you so much because in normal times we use so many volunteers and, and uh, we rely on the community to, to help our program grow. But this year, if you feel like, oh, we're, you're not being utilized as much, um, it's because of those numbers are down. And I don't want it, you to think of it as a throwaway year. We love that you're here. We're going to provide some trainings throughout the season um, so that if you just kind of want to really take this year to learn a lot and then jump into full program next year when our numbers are higher, that's great. We, so we still want to be interacting with you, even if you're not on a ton of lessons. A lot of the participants who are going to be with us have been with us for many years, and we check with the volunteers they've been with but first to see if they want to ski together because they have such these connections built already. And then we'll fill in with our new volunteers um, in those spaces where we need some assistance. So thank you so much for your flexibility this season and your energy. And I can't wait to be, be chatting with all of you. And what do we got for questions? Oops, while you're looking at questions, just one more thing guys too. Um, in addition to that, there, we focus not using equipment during your first two days of training because we really want you to hone in on what this experience is all about. But like Patrick was saying, the tethers and the ski legs and the, the sit skis, those, it's a progression to get there. So um, we will be offering hopefully those clinics during the season so that you can jump in like the next step will be the tethers. And then um, usually it's a good, you gotta be checked off a lot of uh, all of our skill sets. So don't think you don't have an opportunity and wonder why I didn't get it at 10 o'clock in the morning, start tethering. Um, you'll get there, promise. If you want to, that's it's all about what you want. Yeah, the non-equipment lessons are honestly so rewarding too. So um, I know like when you think about adaptive skiing, sometimes you get that image of the equipment lessons, but um, man, it's so rewarding working with someone on, on two track skiing and getting them through the progression and um, really fostering that independence. So those lessons are just as important and, um, and they're a lot of fun. Well said, well stated, well stated. What do we got for questions? I can't see the chat box. Nothing yet. No takers. Fire away, <laughs> you guys are zoomed out. Well, we don't know what we don't know. And I'm sure after your first training weekends, you'll have lots of questions and we'll be here for you. Those of you that are training this weekend, please drive skillfully up to the slopes. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of traffic. We want to see your smiling faces. And uh, let's have a wonderful season. Here we go. Kick it off. Here a big cheers go. to everybody. We're so happy you're here. I experienced a new hazard in the canyon the other day. Uh, I was stopped by a cow, a, a, <laughs> a beef cow in the middle of the canyon. I don't know where they were grazing. I, you know, so just you know, keep your head on a swivel, people. So I'll, I said, there's one question that says, will, be, will we be volunteering along with more experienced volunteers and how will it be decided who we volunteer with? Great question. Uh, yes, by design, one of the benefits of having two volunteers with one participant is that we can put a, a veteran volunteer with a new volunteer and then the participant. So it's a world where we're not just there to teach the participant. It's an environment where we're all going to learn from each other. Uh, yeah, we don't want you to feel like you're thrown to the wolves. Like we said, it could be, a, it could be a, an overwhelming experience or a slightly uncomfortable experience. So um, that will all be laid out when you sign up or get signed up for these lessons. And sometimes you... question. Who asked that question? That was a good one. Good question. And sometimes if you are paired by yourself, 
it's because probably our participant has been skiing with us for years. They're completely um, able and you're more like a ski buddy. Uh, so just like Patrick said, we're not gonna just throw you in the world. Good luck, here you are, thanks. So um, yeah, and just to learn from one another. I mean, every day I'm learning, every day I'm learning, let me tell you. Yeah, and staff, we wanna float around too and be out there, you know, to be resources for you guys while you're doing your lessons too. So you can keep an eye out for us and we'll keep an eye out for you too. I spent a lot of time in my early days, like getting so frustrated and like with a participant or someone doesn't succeed as much as I wanted them to. And I feel really bad about it. And I would go to the staff and say, this is what happened. And then they would sit me down and we would talk about all the circumstances and help coach um, some, some uh, new skills or, or things to handle those lessons. So we're here for a debriefing of lessons and discussions. Mm -hmm. There's a question out there about signing up for more snow clinics. I know everybody's eager beaver right now, but we're trying to get the 386 people into clinics. So right now for new volunteers, we just need you to sign up for the two-day introduction to adaptive skiing. And then, like I said um, earlier, then we'll see what we have going on and what people's needs are for in the season at Big Sky and Bridges probably tethering and think we'll start you with tethering and things like that. So one clinic, one clinic is two days. It's a Saturday and a Sunday or a Thursday and a Friday. But we appreciate your enthusiasm to love it. already learn more beyond this coming training. Anything else? Trent Killian has to Bye, pop Trent. off. Go easy on the world, Trent. We believe in you. <laughs> Big Sky program on Saturdays only. No, we run it every single day. Every day, Monday through Sunday. The Saturdays were just for the locals. So Bridger Bowl is mainly our local hill, and Big Sky is more destination skiers. So, um, but even though Bridger runs lessons every day at the schools and things like that, where we, we have some schools coming in, that's usually in March from the, the local area around Gallatin and up here in, in Big Sky, but the majority of our lessons are coming from out of state and, and a lot of from out of state. Does that answer your question? Charlie? On a normal, not a normal, I don't like the word normal. In previous years, <clears throat> The Bridger program has gotten bus groups from Livingston, Belgrade, and Bozeman. So it's a pretty wide net of people on that bus up to Bridger. All righty. Well, what do you think? No questions are coming in. You've been on here. You guys have been troopers with all of our Zoom calls. Again, we can't thank you enough. We are pumped to meet all of you to put the, the face with the mask. Can't wait. Um, but we'll see you starting some of you tomorrow. And then from here on out, we'll see a lot of you till the, till the end of April. It'll be fun. Give us a shot if you guys need anything. Mm -hmm. Thanks again. Yeah, thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>